I delegate repetitive tasks to apps and software. So I have used a range of different software and I have also produced my own using um, Python code as well as app builders online. These have saved me hours of work, no doubt. And throughout research in your PhD, you can do the same. So for example, I use Zapier. Zapier is a fantastic if then do this, kind of if something happens in your email inbox or if something happens in another bit of software that you're using or something online, then do this. If this, then that. And it has saved me hours and hours of work. Okay, sneeze. <coughs> Also, I have actually produced my own web scraping apps using Python code. I've used um, different Python plugins such as WebDriver and Selenium, and I think it's called Beautiful Soup, to actually create my own web scraping kind of uh, repetitive task solutions. And it means that I can actually leave this running and go do something else. So while I am having lunch, I can leave it running and it can gather the information. It would have normally taken me hours to gather myself and you can do exactly the same thing for scraping the web for research articles for new things if you find yourself going to the same websites over and over again and looking for specific kind of uh, bits of information on those websites you can automate that and learning to code in Python has been one of the best things I have ever done now I'm not saying my code is perfect it just needs to work for me so I'm sure a developer would look over it and go oh that is gross but for me it works perfectly so do that and also I have used an app called bubble it's an app maker you don't need to actually code using you know typical kind of programming language you can actually code your own apps and your own functionalities just using drag and drop software which I absolutely love I've used it in the past for startups that I've been working on and now I use it for little tiny repetitive tasks that I can't find an app to kind of do for me and so learning these skills has saved me hours and hours of repetitive tasks and I'll link all of those sort of like different software solutions down below. There is normally an app out there that can help you and if there isn't, it's relatively easy to build your own. Now this simple habit has allowed me to get going in the mornings and simply it's about leaving notes for yourself of where you've just finished at the end of the day and what you need to do next, the next morning to get going again. And we all know what it's like, sat at home uh, of an evening, you're, you're winding down and you just kind of forget a little bit about the day and the specifics of what you need to do to get up and running. And when you land in the office or at your desk the next morning, it can be really hard to build up that momentum again you think oh I'll just go grab some coffee or I'll just go to the tea room and you know just relax a little bit ease into the day and you can lose a lot of time in that moment so I like to leave myself an actual list of things to do in the morning so it may be experiments that I need to run it may be emails that I need to send although I don't normally send emails in the morning you'll find out way uh, why later on in this video but also it's about just making sure that you hit the ground running first thing in the morning and it's a really simple habit so that the first thing Thing in the morning you know exactly where to start it takes less than a minute to write down the things you need to do and it really saves hours in the long run another habit that I have built up that I think is really valuable is to know when something is in my capacity and if it's something that I'm good at or whether or not I should delegate in research you can build collaborations to help build up like a little personal team to help you be more productive. So I was particularly good at atomic force microscopy and I was particularly good at analyzing the results and I actually kind of liked it. So I would actually be the go-to person if someone wanted to do a bit of conductive AFM um, and I also didn't like doing other things. So I found people that did like to do those things um, such as working on the scanning electron microscope or doing a little bit of data analysis and so I built up kind of a little collective team of different skills that I could lean on if I needed to. Not only does it help boost your kind of citations because hopefully you'll all be working together and sort of putting each other on, on the papers that you produce, but also it means that you can be more productive with your time. It just means you are doing what you're good at the majority of the time and it means that uh, you can just sort of like save 
time by just, you know, if it's a task that you don't want to do, you're going to put it off much more. So learn what is in your actual wheelhouse and what you actually like doing and build a little kind of like collaboration team for those little things that you don't do too often, but take you a while, but someone else can do better. During your research, and especially if you're an early stage PhD student, you can feel a pressure to say yes before actually considering what you need to do to satisfy that yes. So change your default from yes to let me think about this because a lot of your time can get sucked up by doing other people's work. And sometimes, and I've mentioned this in other videos, they can paper bait you, as in they can say, well, just do this little thing for me and then I'll put your name on a paper. And in my experience, people that say that don't often put your name on a paper. And so therefore, it's just wasted time. And so before accepting and just saying yes, because you feel like you need to, if someone's senior in the lab or your supervisor or someone else in the department is asking you something, just take a moment and change your default answer from yes to, hang on, let me just think about that. And it just gives you a little bit of breathing space to actually think, well, is it gonna help me? Is it gonna help me be productive? Is it gonna conflict with anything I need to do right now? And just that little moment of reflection can save you hours. Now this is where we need to delve a little bit deeper. When are you at your best for certain tasks? For me, first thing in the morning when I sit down at my desk, that is when I need to do the mind intensive stuff like writing or data analysis. And then in the afternoon, I can work with myself and my own sort of knowledge of what I'm like. And I can do those admin tasks or the things that don't require me to really think. Like I can go into the lab and actually do something rather than think intensely about something. That needs for me to be done in the morning. So think about what you are like. Are you better in the morning or the afternoon? Do you like uh, working late at night or first thing in the morning? And just putting tasks and aligning them with when you're at your best for that task will save you hours because you won't just be forcing yourself to do it. You'll be a little bit more motivated to push through um, and do the things you actually need to for your research career. So just have a moment, write down when you are at your best for certain things and make sure your tasks align with that. Sometimes you can't help it and you have to work late. Um, you have to do data analysis when it's not ideal because a certain machine is available or because certain expertise is available at that time. But for the majority of your kind of calendar time, work with your um, own body clock, I guess. No multitasking. I used to have days where I'd feel like I'd done everything but achieved nothing. And so multitasking was the kind of bedrock on which those days sit. And unfortunately, multitasking makes you busy and not as productive. I have saved countless hours by actually just focusing on one task. Even if that task takes all day, at least it is done. I am about completing a big task rather than trying to chip away at lots of little things. And it does feel a little bit counterproductive initially because we kind of trained ourselves to be busy, busy, busy. If you're not busy, you're not being productive. But if I can say at the end of the day, I have done these two major things or I have done this major step towards a big goal, then that really makes me feel more productive. And it stops me from having those days where you'll run off your feet but achieve nothing. So stop multitasking, batch it all together and just work on that one thing Trust me, it doesn't feel awesome, but it works. Now this is a big one for me, and I still use it to this day, and that is work on the things with the best return for your time. And this can be called the 80-20 principle or the Pareto rule, but it has really paid dividends in my life right now and during my research. That is, work on the things that are giving you the returns. We seem to spend a lot of our time trying to force something to work. And during your PhD and research, you know, you're kind of on a little bit of a time pressure to produce papers, to get something to work so you can tell the field. And so I really recommend really sort of like initially scattergunning it a little bit and then focusing on the things that are actually working and providing you with the returns. That is the universe's way of telling you which direction to take your research and you need to be tuned into that. 
sometimes we have a tendency, I know I do, where I'm like, oh, even though this thing's working, great, tick that, I should try to get this other thing working. And it maybe it will never work or it will take so much effort to get this other thing working that it's not worth it. When in fact, I should be focusing on the thing that is working and getting as much value from that thing as possible. And so focus on what is working and train yourself to really sort of double down in those areas because part of you is gonna be like, yeah, but I can get this other thing working really well. And sometimes it's just waste, and a lot of the time actually, it's just wasted energy. So there we have it. There are the top habits that I recommend if you wanna save yourself hours during your research and also just in life in general. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. And also remember to go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. There's a blog growing there as well. And also, if you want free stuff, go sign up to my newsletter where you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content, only available for free, so go sign up now, and I'll see you in the next video.